Good to see you again. Are you ready for another lecture on adult development and life planning? I hope so, because today is an important one. In it, we'll be discussing the relationships between strengths, personality, and habits, and how individuals can best manage all those characteristics so as to be as successful as possible in their academic careers, professional careers, and personal lives. And finally, we'll finish off by looking at some of the additional academic resources available to you here at San Diego Christian College. So then, how about we get started? God has a unique design for you. He has a role for you to play. It is as if you are a member of a great orchestra. We just need to figure out what instrument it is you play so you can complete the symphony. Your strengths are developed out of your talents. Those things which are natural, things that are just easy to accomplish without exerting extra energy, they are refined with knowledge and skill building. They just get easier. There is biblical truth that supports these principles. As stated in the weeks earlier, Genesis reminds us that we are created in the image of God. Psalm states that we are unique and have a chosen blend of gifts. And this week, let's look at Ephesians. Which offers the truth that God wants us to accomplish good works using the specific gifts He designed for us. Simply stated, our mission in life is to exercise our strengths in settings which God has caused interest with the passion He has stirred in our hearts. We were not all created to do the same things in the same places, and we are not all created to do everything. We are all needed, and there is a part for us to play in God's orchestra. Another area that often impacts adult development is personality. Ask yourself some questions: Do you like peace and quiet? Do you hate working with numbers? Do you want a job with a set schedule? The answers to these questions could give you some insight into your personality. By definition, personality is the imagined pattern of behavior, thoughts, and feelings consistent across situations of time. Even though you may describe yourself as acting different with certain situations or with certain people, personality says that our core tendencies in behavior and thinking persist regardless of the situation or person. However, with this definition, we need to be careful because traits can be an oversimplified description of people. There are several theories used to describe personality, and we will not spend a lot of time on this. However, it is good to take pause and reflect on our personality. Dr. Tim LaHaye, author and co-founder of SDCC, described personality through temperaments: sanguine, phlegmatic, choleric, and melancholy. The chart that you see on the slide is available in paper format in this week's Weblinks component. There are a variety of personality inventories used to make diagnostic decisions, screening devices for various agencies, colleges, and employers, or research tools. The Taylor Johnson instrument is a noted tool, but the Myers Briggs inventory is probably the most noted. The complete inventory is very sophisticated and requires training in order to administer and score. But there are various versions out there that can be accessed through career development sites, etc. My advice is to consider personality inventories as one tool to help you discover the individual being studied. As believers, we must also remember we have the Holy Spirit living within us to guide our attitudes. Closely related to your personality are your habits. Stephen Covey, author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. States that a habit is the intersection of knowledge, skill, and desire. According to Covey, people develop habits based on predictable, motivating forces. He even organizes those motives into three main categories. First, there are primary motives. These are the motives that are innate and unlearned, meaning they just inherently exist in all people. Next are the secondary motives. These are motives that are essentially stimulus-seeking and biologically rooted. Finally, there are learned or social motives. These are motives that you achieve or acquire through interacting with the people and world around you. The seven habits Covey describes in his book work together to move us toward interpersonal effectiveness. So, how does this play out in life? You may be wondering. 
Well, the seven habits Covey describes involve being proactive, starting things with an end in mind, putting first things first, thinking of win-win scenarios, seeking to first understand and then to be understood, synergizing all the elements, and sharpening the saw, so to speak. When put into action, the seven habits help us take responsibility for our own lives, think about what really matters most, organize and execute our priorities, and make agreements or develop solutions that are mutually beneficial. Covey describes the objective is to move progressively on a maturity continuum from dependence to independence to interdependence. Although dependence is the current paradigm of our society, Covey shared his theory that we can accomplish much more by cooperation and specialization. However, we must achieve independence before we can choose interdependence. The habits work together to move us along toward interpersonal effectiveness. Change is a cycle of being and seeing. Habits 1, 2, and 3 be proactive, begin with the end in mind, put first things first, deal with self-mastery. This is what Covey labeled private victories, and these were required for character growth. The private victories precede public victories. Habits 4, 5, and 6 are the more personality-oriented public victories of teamwork, cooperation, and communication. And Habit 7 is the habit of continuous improvement, creating an upward spiral of growth. Habits 4, 5, and 6 are the more personality-oriented public victories of teamwork, cooperation, and communication. And Habit 7 is the habit of continuous improvement, creating an upward spiral of growth.